right, it is six o'clock. There's a quorum of the Conservation Commission present, four in the room, two over Zoom. And so I am opening the February 15th, 2022 meeting of the Rutland Conservation Commission. As a reminder, as obvious, we are on Zoom. We are being recorded by, by the TV station, which will broadcast <coughs> it live, stream it to the internet, uh, rebroadcast later and put it on YouTube. Uh, I think that's the only notice I need to give. Sounds good. It's good enough, right? I'll second it. <laughs> Alrighty, let's do the dreaded screen share and go, come on. Oh, no, 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 we have to start with the minutes. Do we have any other announcements? No, we don't, not today. So we have the, I don't, I don't need to whip through this. If anybody has comments or questions. I would like to make a motion to approve as written. A second. Any comments, suggestions, corrections? Hearing none, roll call. Okay. Gentilucci. Aye. Danza. Aye. Clark. Aye. Uh, Landgren. Aye. Delaquilla. <laughs> and Crane also abstains. Imagine, uh, imagine those two with no opinion. Yeah, I can <laughs> that can only mean one thing. We weren't, we weren't here. <laughs> All right. Uh, I am going to continue the hearing for Molten Pond Dam on Pomagusset Road. Uh, I do have... A quick zoom in on this. Obviously, I did not take part in the last meeting, but I did watch the uh, the video. Uh, uh, the only thing I want to say right now is the DP, DEP did have comments, so let's chat about those briefly. I do see that we have a couple of CHA reps on the board. Excuse me, on, on <laughs> available. Uh, I see they discuss a. Uh, a, a small difference in impervious surface, fine. If there is, I'm not gonna take time on that today. I assume that there's a reasonable explanation and correction if necessary. I think the other much longer comment is much more, <laughs> could be more involved in that they don't see the alternatives analysis. Uh, in response to that, Peter, um, yes. Google Drive. Oh. Yep, they did have some additional documentation in response to these comments. Give me just a moment and I can probably, oh, because that's it right here, so boy. Just a second. No, that was the correct, and I got that, and oh, I. Which one? Oh, no, no, not the project changes, not project change. Do you remember what it's called? Uh, NEPA, a document from NEPA, and then there was also, um, I remember it said Portland or Watershed. Um, There's a uh, proposed watershed plans, maybe. And then there was no, this is, well, plans. this is the full blown plan kit set, I maybe think. The John Morgan, maybe he can help. Hey, John, could, care to guide us through? Uh, sure. The uh, the PDF, the title of it was a NEPA response with uh, yesterday's date. Okay. So we received the comments through MEBA, so we wrote back to MEBA, even though they are DEP comments. No, sure, sure. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so we see. I, I'll admit it, I haven't read this. <laughs> um, we just received it yesterday. Right. Um, but there was a couple, John, there was a couple other documents you sent me. What were those titled? Uh, so those were the, uh, the watershed, uh, the watershed maps that uh, DEP had requested existing and proposed, and I believe you had those up a minute ago. Right, we have those. So those were uh, some of the things that DEP had requested. So we, uh, uh, 
in response to their, their comments, um, we clarified that discrepancy, we provided the watershed figures, and then we gave them a summary of uh, the BMP alternatives that we had reviewed as part of the project. Um, we went through station by station and mm -hmm. indicated, you know, what we looked at and uh, uh, why we uh, selected not to uh, uh, implement additional BMPs in those areas. Mm -hmm. Anybody, please let me know if I need to go faster or slower. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you'd like, we can certainly walk through uh, all of the different areas uh, if you'd like to go through them. Let's I'm see. not sure there's a lot to that. If somebody has a qu has questions, I'm happy to. I haven't seen anything that doesn't make sense yet. Yeah. And the last two things they had asked for were the uh, to look at the operation and maintenance plan, and mm -hmm. uh, we did that, and we, we can incorporate the uh, the snow disposal guidelines into that plan. Sure. Um, and then air quality, uh, they're concerned about uh, dust, and we have both water and calcium chloride uh, proposed um, for dust control as part of the project. Right, that's all pretty standard stuff, if I remember right. Correct, yeah, we include those on, on most of our projects. Okay, well, now that there is a number and they've answered the DEP questions, uh, are there any other questions from the committee, commission? No. Nope. Or comments? I will... I Go ahead. I think there was one comment in the last uh, the meeting about uh, the uh, whether we would have the the uh, hoods for the catch basins, and uh, we did confirm with the uh, Rutland DPW that we will be implementing those. We'll probably use the Mass DOT standard uh, hoods within all, all of the catch basins. Yeah, I I actually was CC'd on those emails, so yeah. I probably okay, should have provided that to the. <laughs> to the commission as well. But. That's a simple change. It's just things he requests. Yeah, exactly. That's fine. Um, and in fact, Tamika, were you copied on that? No. Okay, I will forward it to you just so you can put it in here as part of the record. Sure. Uh, I will open this up to the public. Does anyone have questions or comments on this application? Hearing none, I will now ask, are there special conditions we should be considering for this notice? No. I would just say that's standard. Yeah, just standard, I mean. Yeah, I think the area that we'd be concerned about is already captured under the dam removal, so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, then. Uh, I will take a motion to close the hearing. I'll make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Uh, oh, yeah, roll call. Langrenai. <laughs> Clark. Clark, aye. Delacola. Aye. Gentilucci. Aye. Danza. Aye. Crane, aye. It's closed. I'll make a motion <clears throat> to sign our standard order of conditions for this NOI. I'll make the motion. So moved. I mean, second. <laughs> uh, roll call. Delacula. Aye. Landgren. Aye. Clark. Aye. Gentilucci. Aye. Danza. Aye. Crane. Aye. All right. So now we're going to move on. So, gentlemen, I think you're all set. Okay, great. Uh, there is a, one thing I wanted to bring up to the commission. We, we do have a few minor uh, adjustments to some of the areas of the dam would be relevant to the other NOI. Ah, um, okay. So I'm not sure. Um, we can forward you the uh, the information, but it's uh, because the Army Corps had asked us to prepare an impact, updated impacts plan, we, mm. we, uh, we did that for them and noticed that a couple of the areas changed by a small amount. So 
we wanted to uh, make you aware of that, um, that the, the numbers will be changing slightly. Design isn't changing from what you've seen in the past, but the, some of the numbers are a little bit different. I assume <coughs> they got bigger, otherwise you'd say so. Uh, they are slightly bigger. Slightly bigger, uh, yeah, okay. So, um, it was actually an error in the original calculation for the uh, temporary BBW impact. Mm -hmm. uh, we had originally uh, indicated it was 218 square feet, but it's actually 659 square feet. Um, although nothing has changed on the plan, the calculation that was done originally was incorrect. Okay. So, yes. uh, and the other the other changes to land under water were very minor. You know, they varied by less than fifty square feet uh, mm -hmm. from the original. All right. Well, send us along the the, uh, the changes, and okay. I I don't know what to say other than that at this moment until we start seeing the numbers. All right. We'll send them in, and yeah, if you, you know, if there needs to be any kind of modification. Uh, we can uh, certainly do that. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good night. Thanks. You too. Stay here. All right. I am now going to open the hearing for NOI at 145 Turkey Hill Road. That'd be me. Hi there. Hi. Hi. So. Go ahead. I'll let you. I'll let you. I'll give you the floor. Well, you started with the hard one. <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. Uh, so, and this has um, changed since I submitted this because National Grid has revised their plan. Ah, okay. To doing this, and so this is for an NOI for 145, which I probably could have done an RDA for, but I was. I was on a roll, so I went with it. Um, but the actual work is going to be on 143 Turkey Hill Road. Yes, it's all, uh, the, everything that's jurisdictional is on this driveway, as near as I can tell. So at, on the neighbor's side, it's 143, you say? Okay. Yes, and so my interest is secured with, through a special permit from for a common driveway, mm -hmm. which we have already have. Oh, so this splits off. T oh, well, I see. It splits off right here to 143's house, and then and then to you. Okay. Yes. And so, what National Grid was originally talking about was like a pole at the top of the by the street, and another one, and then we would be trenching down to the two houses. Okay. But they are going to be putting in. Uh, three poles now, oh, and okay. so and I think you have a plan for that. Uh, just a second, I have to let somebody in. Uh, here, let me go to one forty-five. Yes, I have. I saw a number of plans, but yeah. uh, National Grid the, gave me one, and then they the did pole locations one. or proposed electricity. There yeah, are, there's two different. It would be this one here, I think. May, well, let's try that one first. No, wrong. That's my. Let's do this. that one. There we go. And you actually, there's another one that's even <coughs> a little bit better than that, but we could use that if you want. Uh, I don't. There's an email from an applicant. Yeah, anything I receive will be in the drive. It's labeled National Grid Easement. Oh, it, oh, oh, that's why I didn't even open it, because I didn't want to read legalese today. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. No. Yeah, there's three poles. Yep. And so when I scale this out, mm -hmm. the last pole um, is right about the 100 foot buffer line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I can just kind of show you on this one here. And so, really, so there's three holes to be, you know, they use the auger. Yeah, yeah right. There's no yeah, minimal impact. And then yeah. we'll be trenching from the poles to the house. Right. 
but all trenches outside of the buffer. Right, except for the base so, of the pole. Sounds like the very base of the pole is going to be but, just but, inside, but, so the beginning of the trench will be. So that's by, yeah. you know, when I scaled it. So it, it could be five, six, eight feet this way, five, six feet, eight short yeah. feet that way. Yeah. You're, so that's you're 90 foot plus feet Here's out. Here's the 100 foot buffer okay. right there. Yep. So that's my, when I scale it up. Yeah, you're yeah, right about this. That's, that's not an issue. Right, okay, yeah. Again, so right in that zone. Yeah, so, so there will be some work in there, but it's minimal square feet, and I don't know what your threshold is, but um, that's, that's the latest from National Grid right there. That's what they want to go with. That's what we're using for the easement for National Grid. So this is the effectively the wetland? Yes. Okay, so... That was one of my big questions. It wasn't clear from the from the septic drawing that we have whether this driver was doing a crossing or just happened to be in the hundred. So it looks from uh oh that figure that I just had. Nope. Let's see what I need yeah, to do to, to bring it. Well, that was one, but I was looking for the, and the, that driveway is already existing. It's an existing driveway. Yeah, that's the right one. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, so this driveway work, which isn't even shown as common on this drawing, but uh, that's okay. So it's really following this driveway, but that's not in the hundred. Is and, and that's already been. Um, what has one forty three? showing you the hundred right there. I know it's not showing the hundred. My question is. The driveway for 143, which is going to be a common driveway with 143, 145, correct, is in the hundred. Has the has the 143 driveway already been through the permitting process, whether through RDA or NOI? Well, it's been pre, it's a pre-existing. Oh, it's pre-existing, right? Okay, it's old. Where he splits off is a little close, but yeah, it's a little close. I I agree, it's a little close, but I also don't think it's. Yeah, so there is clearly a little bit of work. Yeah, inside the hundred. In the hundred, but yeah. I agree with this scope of work. You could probably have gotten away with an RDA. Yeah. <laughs> but since we have an NOI filed. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and if that driveway is part, it's not paved or anything. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that's just gravel. Yep. But are you planning on leaving it gravel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are there questions from the commission? No. Danny, I have a question mostly related um, not to specifically 145, um, but do you are you responsible for the lot at 143? Because on our agenda we've been talking about um, how they clear cut that lot without a permit. Oh, Melissa, I have info on that. Okay. Yes. It's so that that didn't have to do with Jim, though. I just wanted to make that clear for the record, though. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Oh, that's right. That's up later on our agenda, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yes. Convenient. Yeah. All righty. So, is there a house? I mean, this is not jur a jurisdictional question. Is there already a house on 143? No, because no. that's that's why they're clearing, and this is the electricity for both houses. Right. I'm just catching up in my little head here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little further ahead of them in terms. So, so I'm doing I'm do doing the national grid stuff. Got it. Mm. Okay. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's been a challenge. It is what it is. How right? long? How long does it take you so far? I was done the first house before I had power. Yeah. And, and so. Yeah. Other questions from the commission? No. Anything from the public? Questions or comments from the public? Anything we should be discussing for special conditions? I will take a motion to close this hearing. So moved. Second. Roll call. Gentilucci. Aye. Danza. Aye. 
Langren. Aye. Clark. Aye. Delacola. Aye. Crane. Aye. I would like a motion, please, to because we didn't discuss any, <laughs> to uh, sign out to, to assign our standard order of conditions for this property. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Roll call. Delacola. Aye. Clark. Aye. Langren. Aye. Danza. Aye. Gentilucci. Aye. Crane. Aye. And that's one. So now, that was all those pains. And remember, that was the hard one. The hard one. <laughs> well, let me just close some of this stuff up. <coughs> For all that previous stuff, uh, no, I don't need that. That we'll need to talk about. Okay. So I am now going to open a hearing for the NOI at 149 Turkey Hill Road. Please. Septic design. There we go. So this one here is uh, the house and the septic system itself is outside the 100 foot buffer. But we have a small area that will be, at least on this plan, shows that mm -hmm. it will be graded. And that's probably, you know, realistically 400 square feet, but I think it showed maybe 600 square feet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. up there. So we have about, say, 600 square feet of grading that's going to be done within the 100 foot buffer zone. What's your grade plan? I don't, I can't read scale. <laughs> so is it a three to one? Five yeah, it's three to one. Three to one. On the, after the breakout. Uh, let's see, we're far enough away from the other one. Fine. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Questions or comments from the public? Anyone? Anyone? Any special conditions we should be considering for this property? I will take a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Roll call. Langren. Aye. Gentilucci. Aye. Denza. Aye. Clark. Aye. Delacola. Aye. Crane. Aye. And I'd like a motion, please, to sign or assign the standard order of conditions for this property. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call. Uh, Danza. Aye. <laughs> Clark. Aye. Gentilucci. Aye. Langren. Aye. Delacola. Aye. Crane Aye. That's right. Keep on your toes, folks. <laughs> You're all set. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. I'll get those emailed to you. Appreciate <clears throat> it. No problem. Take care. Thank you. Have a great night. Have a great night. Have a great night. <laughs> ah, thus ends the hearings. What do you know, Jared? You got we got a, You're here to talk about some other things. Uh, so let's talk about the cell phone tower. Those of us who were there took a walk for the proposed cell phone tower that it, by address is located off Phillips Road. Uh, our previous walk was started on the driveway between the schools and went in and we looked at the property, but things have changed. What changed, you know? Uh, the, the fact that it's a driveway means the town can't grant an easement. D can't grant access. It's not a road. I know it's not, I know it's not a road. It's always been one of those things. Yeah. Yes, and so when the town figured out that it couldn't grant an easement, it said, I'm not going to happen. So they redid the plan. Uh, where are we? Yeah, you got to get a seat and look at that because that's uh, a little... Yeah, it's a whole lot, di there's a lot different. <coughs> now, the location of the tower is the same. And if mm -hmm. I go up, oh look, there's a driveway, more or less. So now what they're going to do <coughs> is come off Phillips, and then they have to get a path from Phillips to here. Oof. And there's virtually no way to do it, or effectively no way to do it, without some form of wetlands impact. So along with this map that shows all the wetlands, we also got this neat little email that I'm going to try and make brief 
Um, so they have three options. First is a crossing at the narrow section of the flag wetland area, which now, Chris, you're on board. You're on here, right? Yes, I am. So, I mean, I see wetland. Oh, there's, here's wetland crossing one. So it's what, coming around here across this path? and then crossing the wetland and working your way down to the site is that i mean to the tower is that correct that is correct yes and oh. uh, it's it's approximately 1200 square feet of new impact to the wetland across at that location mm -hmm. um, the remainder of the access road and the tower itself are outside jurisdictional resource areas including the buffer zone mm -hmm. um, if you look just north there's wetland crossing option number two yes which follows an existing trail. Um, it's, we believe it's a grandfather trail through the wetland. Sure. However, it does still have hydric soils. It's still part of the wetland. Um, it's roughly 3,500 square feet for this option. Um, so th those are the two options we're looking at. We also have a third option, which would take you straight down that driveway into the 200 foot surface water protection area. Mm -hmm. It's not shown on the plan here. Uh, we've deemed that not viable, primarily because it'll impact the zone A surface water protection area, which stormwater is prohibited, we would then have to cross the stream and wetland down below. So right. we'd have greater impact. So we, based on the nature of that, we, we didn't even put it to paper. We know it's it's it's, it's not a good alternative. Um, we like option one. And in my professional opinion, it's the best, it's the least impact. And it also gives us the opportunity to restore the previous trail at option two. So we can go in there and part of our mitigation which would, um, it's approximately 600 square feet of the trail could be mitigated in place and remove the existing trail through the wetland. Um, that would get us about 50% of the mitigation we need for that crossing one. Um, I'll need to go back to the site to look at a location where we can do the remaining square footage, assuming the board wants one-to-one. -one. I, I wasn't sure if your, your procedure is typically one-to-one -one like the state. Um, we think that's appropriate for this crossing. We'd like to discuss that tonight as well. So well you can prepare we're gonna ask you one and a half to one. Yeah, or actually two. Two to one. We really prefer two to one. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that is our, what's the word I wanna use? Policy, that's the right word for us to use here. Right. Because we don't have okay. a bylaw. So we know what we like to see. Um, I'm not even, just a fast look. I thought there was 5,000 square feet you could play with. That's what I was thinking. There's, so, there's, there's a 5,000 so square foot. It, we would be presenting this as a limited project because we have no other access to the uplands in the middle of the site right. now that we can't access through the, uh, the private roadway there. Um, with that, there is some discretion on the mitigation. Um, we, there are some large mature trees around this area, so we prefer not to take down large healthy trees around this if we can reduce the mitigation. Um, but you know, we, we, we can look to do the two to one. You know, we, we prefer to do something smaller so we're not taking down large trees in that vicinity uh, to meet the requirement for the mitigation. Um, yeah, I mean, that, the one of, that's going to be one of the challenges of this site is it's, it's a very wooded site as it is. You got trade offs to make. Yeah, exactly. So, so given there are trade offs here, so let me just talk about things one at a time. I agree with you that option three is the least good option and one that really ought to be avoided. Um, my, I, I don't want to say, well, no, I'll call it a concern. One of my concerns with option one is just how close you are to the zone A and where our friends at the DCR are, are going to formally draw that line. Um, so, <coughs> As we've seen on other projects and other sites, uh, all the maps that they put out are provisional based up, and until they go out and investigate the site, they're not gonna consider the line final. Uh, I don't know right. how they're going to behave with respect to this. Most time they claim more so than they have. It's been known to have. It's been known to be, their, their maps are, so can, may, may I interject please, here? Please. We the, the this site has numer had numerous zone A mapped areas based on the you know, the, the GIS mapping. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we actually went out and did a formal delineation of all the wetlands and streams on this site. And we subsequently met with uh, Richard Friend from MassDEP. Mm -hmm. Richard Friend and Bruce, Bruce Bulk typically come out and will review the Zone A designations to determine if they are in fact part of the Zone A and connected. Um, so the Zone A mapping we have here has been reviewed and approved by DEP. Ah. Uh, so we do have, so the, the dark blue hatch line, which you can see on the plan, mm -hmm. are based on actual coordinates that we've won and verified with them. So the, there's a stream running um, uh, north of Wetland Crossing 2. It runs across the property right. down to the Zone A off-site um, to the right on the plan. And that, that stream, there is a disconnect there. So the Zone A was removed from that portion. Um, and we did remove it from a portion of the other stream, uh, BF3, which is uh, below crossings one and two. So the Zone A mapping we have here has been has been confirmed by DEP for purposes of any notice of intent filing or anything we do with the commission. We'll obviously attach that documentation so it's on record with the commission. Great. Uh, but the, but the Zone A mapping we have in front of you is the approved and more current than the GIS mapping for that purpose because we knew it was going to be an issue. We, we worked with Blue Sky from the beginning to address that. Um, and, and uh, you know, now we're just trying to make the design work. Um, option two is approximately 59 feet from the zone A boundary. Mm -hmm. uh, and option one is about six feet from the boundary. Um, again, it is closer. This is why we're here before you tonight. I, some commissions prefer to use an existing trail. In this case, the disturbance is gonna be greater, but we're further from the zone A. The other option reduces the wetland impact, and I believe it can be done in a way to avoid the zone A. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll also reduce the mitigation that we need to do on the site. So that's that's there's pros and cons to both, and that's that's primarily why we wanted to come before you now and kind of get a consensus from the board of what your preferred option will be, so we can design it and come back before you with an NOI. So I do want to ask, what is this feature? Is this a trench, basically, a, a swale? That, that's the access roadway to the tower. They have to create a, a roadway to the tower. Oh, I see. So you're creating it here, right? So you're coming off this trail? Is uh, well, there's this existing trail there. Uh, we'll be following, if you follow the lines through option one and two, that connects directly to it. Yeah, right. So okay. that, that's an existing trail that the, the property owners use now. We'll tie it into, if, if we follow option two, we'll follow along a portion of it and then veer off and mm -hmm. then follow that that pathway down to the tower. If it's option one, we'll just bend right into it. Right. Um, all right, our, uh, I'll start on Zoom this time. Melissa or Jared, questions, comments, preferences? Um, Melissa, you want to go first? Yes, yeah, I think um, you know, looking at it preliminary, at least from a wetlands point of view, option one definitely looks like the best less impactful, um, and I think, you know, it just the, is the property owner, I guess, aware that this would then now limit his access through that existing trail? I, I would have to, uh, Sean Gormley from Blue Skies here, uh, he may be able to speak to that, but if not, did, did, there'll be a new trail for the property owner to access if he follows option one regardless. Um, he can follow that trail into the site and that will connect to the existing trail system on the, on, in, throughout the wooded areas. Sean, I don't know if, if you, have you, have you spoken to the owner about this yet? Uh, hey, hey guys, um, I have not. We're in such a preliminary state right now that uh, we really just don't know what the overall plan is. We'll be talking to them shortly, but we just want to get a feel from the commission uh, where this whole thing is going to go. So uh, we held off for term here. Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, from a visual standpoint and from a number standpoint, option one, you know, definitely looks better because it's at the narrowest point, to me at least. Yeah, I would agree with Melissa. I like option one as well. Um, and like Peter said, we don't have a bylaw for the replication ratio. We, we like to see two to one, but it's more of a policy, not a bylaw. And um, Chris, you mentioned, you know, it might potentially require removal trees I, I would personally be in favor of reducing that um, you know, obviously one to one's the minimum great if we can get a little more but would not want to get more to sacrifice mature trees so I would certainly be in favor of you know, finding a compromise there right and, and I'm, I'm gonna go back
back to the site and take a look now that we have these options laid out. I have the flag numbers. I'm going to go look and you know, if there's, you know, a 30 or 40 inch tree in an area, we'll avoid that for replication. So I want to go find an ideal spot that we can try to maximize. So if we can get, you know, one and a half to one, we will. If not, we'll keep it down to one to one to minimize. We just there's a lot of large diameter pine trees in that area. We'd like to avoid removing them if we can. It's, it was, I hate to see you lose a lot of tree like that when for mitigation when you're going to plant a you know one inch caliber tree red maple or something it's no I, I and i think the commission in general would agree with that if we understand what how much you're going to make and the and basically i hate to do an, a full-blown alternatives analysis but as long as we understand what's happening in the rationale about for not getting mm -hmm. two to one i think that's enough mm -hmm. information for us to make a, a, a good decision that's best for the site I would look to Chris. Can you uh, when you if we do decide collectively to go with option one? Can you do a kind of a detail on the uh, replication and whatever features need to be protected, and see how much you can milk out of it for us? Yeah, typically um, for Terran Design Group. Uh, ben, ben is on, Ben Messer Smith's on the call here too, but yeah, we, when we design the plan, they usually put together working with us a replication sheet, which will have the plan and profile, so it'll, it'll have a detail or blow up of that section, so we, we can definitely do that in the plan set. Yeah, I would assume that would all be part of the NOI when it comes yeah, to time for that. Yeah, just Perhaps. present it with the NOI, mm -hmm. so that way then we can shoot it down pretty easily, but <laughs> <clears throat> I'm only kidding you, <laughs> but you know, whatever you can do to uh, you know, get it somewhere beyond the one to one. You know, whatever fraction you can get, I think it's worth the extra half an hour with drawing it. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we can definitely take a look at that for you. And, and just give us give us whatever you got. I mean, give us what you can do. Right. Am I no longer sharing? <laughs> Am I sharing, Chris? Can you still see the map? Yes. Huh, okay, it's just not showing on TV. I'm wondering what's going on. I don't I think that's the audio one. I think the video one is... No, no, the one up screen. top should be our screen. should be us. Oh. That's all right. I'm not going to worry about it. I'll... The TV crew is on short staff, so we'll, 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 give, we'll cut them a little slack tonight. Uh, all right, so, uh, Skip, anything to say? Uh, all's, all's been said. Okay. Scott. I'm good. Yeah, so I think we're pretty well agreed that option one is uh, is fine with us, is great with us. Um, okay. And we look forward to seeing how it progresses on the plan. Okay, great. All right, then we'll, uh, we'll move forward with option one with the design. We'll get the plan profile details together for a notice of intent. I'll go back to the site, take a look at things for the mitigation, and uh, we'll, we'll see how close to two to one we can get it for the board. And at a minimum, it'll meet the one to one for the state. Plan. Okay. And we'll document the alternatives, option three, the previous location. That'll all be put in there as well um, for the application. Great. Now we will want to do a site walk of this because obviously the last site walk we were very limited. We didn't get anywhere near any of these actual wetlands you guys are going to be interacting with. Right. Right. Um, I, we're we're open if the commission is. We I, I know the applicant would love to do a site walk sooner rather than later. I don't know if you want to schedule something now before we file. Now, if you have any additional input, we can incorporate it into the plans. Um, I, I don't know if you're open to doing that. Uh, we're, we're open to doing a lot. I just don't know how valuable it's going to be since we can't see very much. I mean, I don't know how much there is on the ground there. I know how much is in my front yard. <laughs> right. On I, I would have them submit the. Submit the plan well, now. Not don't wait for a site walk. Yeah, no, well, that's true. But we would want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. I no. Well, I know they're, they're talking significant rain and warm weather. Almost hitting sixty again later this week, and it looks like it's warming into the forties next week. I predict, barring we don't get any more storms, we may see a good thaw come the end of next week. Where, where hopefully you'll see flooding. I don't know if you want to tentatively schedule or just wait and see if we can circle back with you sometime next week when we schedule. Too sad to um, yeah, I was yeah. That's, that's what it, I'm just looking right now first at the at how weather is looking coming up. Not Florida, Peter. Massachusetts. Are you sure? <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> look, you look where you want to go, and I'll right. look where I want to go. Wetland scientists are very in tune with the weather this time of year. We were supposed to be planning on being out all this week until that uh, eight inches came through that no one knew was coming. So. Yeah. Well, we only got an inch. At your house, maybe. We got nothing. But a lot of people, everybody I talked to at work got six to eight. Well, from, from Tatton so Square out, yeah. it, it got heavy. All right, so how does Saturday the 26th look to people? Uh, 26th. I, I actually yeah, cannot do the weekend of the 26th, 27th for a personal. I'm out of town. Uh, well, I my fear is this Saturday is not going to be good, but there's nothing that's going to stop us from moving into, let me just say, March 5, which is the following Saturday. It'll be after our next meeting, but I don't think that's a problem. No. So J March 5th is the MACC conference. I don't know if any of you are attending that. <laughs> I wasn't planning to attend. <laughs> they're, they're, they're doing it virtually this year. March 5th and 12th have sessions. I didn't know if any of the members were planning or... I don't know. I don't, Melissa, I don't know if you were going to that this year or not. I don't think any of the ones on the 5th I'm on for. Okay. How about you, Jared? No, I, I'm not on on the 5th. I'm actually presenting a session. I think it's on the 3rd. So I'm good on the 5th if that works for everybody else. All righty. Yeah. Then it sounds like we can book the 5th. 10 a.m.? Yes, please. Peter, I just had a, a procedural question. Yes. Um, so the continued hearing on the tower is March 9th. My question is, should they still be submitting the permitting on the off chance that it's not approved? Do you know what I mean? Like if the tower gets turned down, should they still be going through this process mm -hmm. ahead of that? Well, I I, it's, I just, I didn't know. the first plate thing for me to say is it's not my place to say okay. what the applicant, how the applicant would like to proceed. Sure. I would think that we would want to set it up and if the applicant would like to cancel the site walk, that's okay. Okay. But if we set it up now, you have to set things up on the expectation that things will proceed according to plan, or even perhaps worse, just continued with more discussion of the future meeting. Those are all possibles. I, I, I think we ought to do as much work as we can in advance of the NLI mm -hmm. so that the NOI process can be as streamlined as possible. And if they, again, if they decide to go, it's easy to go. If they decide not to, then we've just, you know, used, we, we've wasted a little time taking a, a stroll on some woods <laughs> right. on a Saturday. That's hardly a, an imposition. Sure. Absolutely. No, I just, I wanted to ask because from my own knowledge. No, nope. um, yes. Yep. But absolutely, I will get that posted when the time comes. So what are we doing? Fifth. Fifth. What? March 10. 5, 10, 10 a.m. 10 o'clock, you bring coffee. Beat how bring, how about we bring. meet at Phillips Road, right near the entrance? Is, is that a good place to meet? I'll let you tell me, Chris, you've been there. Yes, uh, Sean, but they wouldn't have an issue if they drive down to the parking lot to the back, would they? There's a little more room to park back there. But I, don't, I don't think that would be an issue with you, Sean. And Sean is muted. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, at the landlord property? Yeah, if we met, if they came in the, down the driveway and parked at the back, if they go by the house in the barn, there's a lot of parking back there. Would that be all right with the owner? Um, I'll work by him. Um, okay. If they're not okay with it. Back Let's just plan to meet at the entrance, and if it's good, we'll direct everyone to the back. Great. Marvelous. Are there other questions we can answer for you today? Uh, that, that's all I have. Sean, you good with everything? That's, those are the, I think they've addressed all my comments and questions, so I, which is greatly appreciated. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you in a couple weeks.
We'll see you at Mar uh, 10 a.m. on March 5th. Thank you. Um, all right. Before we continue, I'll be right back. I'm just going to check with something in the back room. Oh, there we are. It's working. Okay. I can see that it's working, so I don't need to go to the back room anymore. All right, so the next two topics are um, came up because of, uh, so when there are major projects that Dave George, the town planner, puts together a meeting of the IRT, I believe that's internal review team, uh, to discuss the projects that involves a number of department heads and CONCOM, I think is the only uh, CONCOM planning police, all the public safety people to review it. So the first one is the retail marijuana establishment to, to be proposed to be put on Main Street, right across from Honey Farms. Again, one-stop shopping. Um, oh, I should pull up my email. So this is it. There is, so these lines, these intermediate lines is are the way the the lots used to be. There was an A and R to basically combine them into a single lot. Uh, so this is the existing. Uh, da -da, why can't I think of the name? Martelli. Martelli Garage. Thank you so much. And it's going to be in front of that. Um, my comments basically discussed this parking structure. What well, structure? It, this parking spaces basically abutting the wetlands with no apparent space in between and my concern is not just the construction of it my concern is the fact that right next to wetlands there are going to be all these automobiles that uh, that will over time lose fluids on the ground it's not the not the intent to but my concern is the potential for pollution of this wetland i'd be more concerned about the snow and salt yeah, I, yeah. If it's a public parking yeah. lot. They're gonna salt. True. Yeah, salt salt's a bigger deal. Mm-hmm. Because everything else is gonna go in a catch basin. I mean, they're gonna have to do drainage on the parking lot. Yeah. So it's I, gonna I, go in a catch basin, settle out. This but, alas has no. I have no information about the drainage plan for yeah. this. Yeah, I mean they're not gonna well, daylight it into the wetland. That's not. That's gonna be a no-no. Right. They're gonna day, daylight it to wetland? No, they're not going to. Oh. <laughs> well, they might want to, but we're not going to. <laughs> Was that you, Melissa? I'm sorry. No, I say because it's commercial, it'll have to meet the stormwater standards. Oh, true. Right, but I would something like this. You would put. I think I would do something about snow removal and yeah. not to be stored next to just because of the salt and calcium factor. Yeah, they're gonna have to present a plan. Yeah, but that's something people don't put in there. Is that? You have to guide rail and everything else. So, but you know, I will have yeah. to find out. If, <clears throat> I'll have to find out from a process point of view. How much of site plan falls specifically under the marijuana bylaw, and how much falls under a separate site plan review as part of a building permit? I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. I would think most of the site plan would be building permit, and the usage is marijuana. It get, it it's gets, a dispensary, right? Yes. It's a store. Yes. That's all that matters, it's a store. It does not affect site. That, that would be my impression. Yeah. That's a commercial be, building that when marijuana goes away and something else comes in, guess what? They change the name of the store and sell hot dogs. It's that's, just a commercial building. It has to comply with a commercial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not, not, not a hugey. Right. Not a hugey. And guess what? We're going to be involved in it anyways. We're going yeah. to get involved, right, I would expect. So I also mentioned that, a lot, that I would expect a lot of this to come up in the normal permitting process. Yep. I caught with you on that email, didn't I? Yeah. Good. Okay, so we can... Again, keep it part of the record. But this is just feedback to, to this is feedback to the IRT for the to the town planner to say this okay. these are our concerns. So I will add the one about snow removal. Yep. And update those that comment. So this is at this point just an FYI. We have no action to take other than feeding comments back. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the next one is Hilltop Estates. Mm -hmm. So this is Brentonall Drive. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't know how many people have seen which plan, because there are two. This is the original plan that was A&R. I'm going to stand up for the people in the room. So all, all of these long driveways along this uh, right side, mm -hmm. they're all wetlands crossings. That doesn't stop them from getting the ANR done. It just might make the building permit. And by the way, there are wetlands over here, and I think there's stuff up here. But that's already an approved plan. This is an approved plan. And they want to modify it too? Why? It is going to look different. It's also oriented differently. Well, that just makes it better. Oh, that looks... They're different. making a subdivision out of it. You have a subdivision off a subdivision? Nope. There is no subdivision there now. It's just an A and R. Every lot had frontage. Okay. Every lot still has frontage on Brent Mall Drive, because because the lot lines didn't change. All that changed is the creation of this full-blown road, which is no longer a common driveway among three of the lots, with everybody else having separate driveways. All the houses are now moved close to this road which will remain private. Um, same number of lots? Sa same number of lots, same lot layout. They just moved where the houses are and they, and they made the public. What was a common driveway, now a private road. Okay. Um, so the wetland impacts have become minimal. Yeah. No crossings. Are they gonna do what, an HOA over there or something for that? They have to because it'll be a, it'll be an actual subdivision. It is going for subdivision approval sometime soon. If, and it hasn't started yet, has it? The process has started yet. Yeah. The process started, but they haven't started the hearing. They've not. Right. Okay. So the comments that I um, sent back. Yes, go ahead. This is where they cleared across Britain. Yes. Okay. I was thinking up on top of the hell I was thinking that crap that one. Ah. I, I'm sitting there going, wait a second. That, that's why this one just. Yep. It's I mean, the, the it's, other one. Yeah. Because this is oriented differently, yeah. then you have to basically turn this 90 degrees to go right. north on and, the And road. that's what just caught me. Because I'm like, yes. wait a second. I'm trying to visualize. This goes up to Glenn's property. Yes, yeah, it look, does. Look at his arrow, the north arrow. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's a better design. And that was the basis of my comment. From a wetlands perspective, they've eliminated the crossings. There may be one or two lots that have wetlands issues. I don't, at first glance, I don't think there are. But again, Nothing dramatic. normal permitting process, no comments from us on this. Right. Other yeah. than we prefer that wetlands people prefer this plan to the previous plan. Yeah. They so, haven't decided which plan they're going with yet. Oh, they want to do this plan. The they developer right. wants to do the this plan. Book. The town has The town has not gone through all of its work on this. Okay. So again, this is an opt for IRT review, and I think I like if there's something like this that's major enough that the whole commission should at least be aware of it. Yeah, I like plan two. Yeah. And this plan, this which is up on the Google Drive, has, oh my gosh, lots of information in it. If you if you're into that sort of thing, I created a separate folder for Hilltop Estates so that there's an easy reference when we need it. Fantastic, thank you. So, any so questions about Hilltop? Yes. So that will be sewer and well, I would think sewer water. They have water too. Yeah, I um, think so. I think so. Yeah. I know sewer because they're tie in because I, I know they did that. Where would they go? The stuff that they got, they got E ones, and they got don't get that sewer line goes right there to the back side of. Okay. So sewer is easy, but I was thinking it being be welds. Yeah, it's my understanding they're going to do sewer all the way up to um, Pomagasa because it's not that far in the grand scheme of things, or to where they can connect. That's what I think I understood. Where is he? Yeah. Okay. No, is it a requirement yet? That if you add sewer, you also have to have town water? No. No. 
I could be wrong about water. Wouldn't be the first time I'm wrong about things. So well, the only reason today. I asked the question is we had discussed that a while ago. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I have one. When we, were, when we were talking about uh, Susie's project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, our, our the, the town's approach is still the same, and we haven't. We haven't set any regulations. Well, well no, not no. that we could set a regulation. Well, the thing yeah. is, is, you eventually, you know, if you have town sewer without town water, you eventually impact You're going to impact water the, water water the aquifer, you will see. absolutely. Mm -hmm. They are, Peter, you're right. They are proposing both. The profiles show water and sewer lines. Yeah, that's funny because I don't think there's water in Britain right now. All right. But so. I don't, I think all those houses. They're all got their own wells. No, but... Uh, he must be running a line from the back back loop off of Bear Hill. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, think that's. He must be coming back up and across. Coming back up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's going to happen? Yes. Yeah. Now, won't this be joyous having sewer mm -hmm. and catch basins mm -hmm. all along Britain on, on a dirt road? On a, on a dirt a road. historical road. Hey. Yeah. Scenic yeah. Road. You know what? You, yeah. You know historical. what? Historical. Pave it and paint it green, and Tom will be happy. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's a that's a different department. That's not yes, a, yes, I, I. Yep. Watch me not get involved in that if I can. Chicken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like to think of myself as smart, not just chicken. Uh, questions or comments on on uh, Hilltop Estates? I thought it was Hilltop Acres at one point. Well, the name isn't real. Stop it's renaming stuff. It's, it's not Peter Way. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think we ought to, you know, reserve our comments until they su submit. Yeah, but if they were asked which way, which way you're leaning is one or two, I like two. Well, I would lean to this, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. even, you know, lesser of two evils. Right. Okay. All right. What's next on our agenda? Hey, Peter, this is Jared. Just to let you know, I do need to jump off in about a minute. Okay. I'll hop on my other meeting. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks. Have a great night, Jared. Thanks, I don't think Jared. there's anything else in particular you need to be there. Okay. All right, I'll sign off now then. All um, right, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Take care, Take care. Jared. All Take right. So, uh, where are we with 165 Cannon? Uh, you are going to speak to the property owners at 91 Central Church. Thank you. Yes, yes, I am going to have to do that soon. Oh, that's right, but then the snow hit. So we're yeah. trying to get a backwards look at the property? Yeah. Oh. Huh. Yeah. So I think as I soon think as... I think at this point, just table it until we... Yeah, we'll table it until we can actually look at it, and then we'll see what we can see. Um, really? Why don't you continue the way we were originally yes. continuing before they basically said no again? It's wrong. It's, it's obviously a wrong. So I would continue with... Well, except that they know a wetland scientist who says things, and so... And then they said they're going to do this, and then they said they're going to do that, and they've done nothing. I go, I go back to go with the no, original I've, intent. Well, yeah. Do you want me to take this off the agenda until the spring? No. How about we look at it in a month? Sure. And then we can decide if, now's the, if that's the right time or if we should extend it again. <laughs> assault is assault, man. Yeah. Just put it on. Yeah. But yes, I still do need to reach out to those people mm -hmm. to see if they're at least amenable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, by the way, <coughs> just as an FYI to the commission, um, we were billed forty dollars from town council for uh, for the work that they didn't really do on the uh, administrative warrant. And again, the only reason I bring that up is that that came out of the wetlands fund because the town's legal fund can't absorb it right now. So we paid for it. Forty dollars. Yeah. Well, that's fine. So, so again, it also means that any action that we take that requires town council approval is coming out of 
that's fine. We have, mo we have money we can't spend, so let's spend it. Except that it's all subject to, to town meeting approval at the beginning of the year. Our budget is our budget. Yeah. Can't oh, actually, that's not true, because we could do something. We, can, we no. can take it out of the fund. Yeah, we can use our Wetlands Protection Act funds. Yeah, you can oh, that's true. It's directly usable yeah. for enforcement. So you can use that. Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's why so I... As long as, it's, it's, as long as it's enforcement. And that's right. Just, you're right. In administration and enforcement can come directly out. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, not that you want to waste it or spend it, but, you know. I did try to fight it just on principle, but because we didn't get anything. But I didn't win. That's okay. Forty dollars from a lawyer? That's like a stamp. Fifteen minutes. Right. That's like a stamp. Right. That's that's reading the email 15, to request it. it. Only seven and a half. Right. You're right. That could have just been the email coming to their inbox. They got to be getting at least a buck and a half. Oh. Who? Well, I guess so. Try three seventy-five. Yeah. Well, I can believe that. Yeah. Right. That's why I said at least three, a buck. Three seventy-five. Buck and a half because forty bucks. Right. You know. It's okay. All right. Moving on. So table for a month. Yeah, we'll table this it for time. a month. This time. This time. Yep. Maybe even the next time. No. I've had I've had I've had enough. If we get to late spring, we'll have had on the agenda for the whole year. Yeah, I've had enough. <laughs> we'll get a record. Is there enough in the wildlands fund right now to hire a helicopter to fly us over it? Drone to probably shoot well, it. Though. Yeah, find um, I know someone with a drone would be glad well, to kill I the whole thing. Joe. I think we need to get a helicopter. So, so the well, fast answer. Yeah, I mean, Melissa, we're getting you a ticket book. <laughs> yeah. A, a ticket book and a badge for that. That's that. When's your birthday? And do I drop it like with the little? Um, uh, uh, Oh my God! What's parachute? Yes. There you go. Yes. Fly over? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you don't set foot on their property, it's all good. <clears throat> that's right. Uh, I too can do something for forty dollars. I don't think that's it, but I would try. <laughs> yeah. So, Joe, could we rent a helicopter for the wetlands funds? Oh yeah. I think so. Oh, we got more. Even we have enough money to do that. That's easy. <laughs> Based on my understanding. To be all the way to her retirement. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving on. So, Tamika, you say that we uh, know something <clears throat> about the Turkey Hill Road lot. Uh, yes, sir. So, I finally found the correct mailing address. The first one that was given didn't exist. Um, and yesterday, Mark Elbag reached out to me, and I uploaded his email to the drive. Oh. They are the ones that are building the house. Oh, uh -huh. He Good. says that they've cleared trees, but that they have not done any grading or something. And they shouldn't have cleared the senior or junior? Junior. Really? So what's, yeah, what's the problem with this? Is it near wetland? It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's right up against that farm pond. So even if they didn't grab, it's still alteration of, uh, I don't know, 10 feet within the pond. Okay. To build their future home, I do And this, this is work that has already Take a place? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the trees are gone. No. So it, it's the yeah. other shared driveway that we were talking about earlier on Turkey Hill. Yeah. So it'd be the house to the left. This is the 143. Yeah. Yeah, okay. the pole are <laughs> Okay. I assume we didn't, have, since I didn't even read this, I didn't even, I didn't, but I don't know what else they could tell us other than. No, I, I said it really was necessary for him to come. Yeah. Until he does the submission, I figured whatever you guys said, I could relay back to him. My letter did state um, that there were not proper erosion control barriers in place. So I did, I did put that out there to them. Oh, so this was something that changed hands midstream. Yes. Yeah, yep. so the owners, um, Florida. They own a lot of land over in that area, and then this individual lot was sold to Mr. and Mrs. Keene. Okay. Um, Alright, so it's all just oversight. Yeah, and I think the biggest concern is mostly the erosion trolls, especially if we get this big rain and kind of melting, because they did clear almost, I would say, about 10 feet from the edge of the pond, and it's a little bit of a drop down. Um, so, it, it would be nice to have something put in relatively soon. Just to protect it. Yeah, I would, I would think so. Want to send 
Mark. Yeah, I was going to say, send that to Mark just okay. to ask them. Yeah. Yeah, if, there's a, if there's any way to put some type of erosion control in before spring yeah, and thaw. It, it's, it's tough because, again, there's snow on the ground right now. You can do it with a mini. Nice you can come in here with a mini and just. Yeah, yeah he can you, can, you can bury it as much as you can. Something's better than nothing. Yeah. And it sounds like Mark came into this at the end. Right. Like, we need to hire somebody for this. No, yeah. Mark's pretty creative. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. All righty. Any other questions or comments on that property? Nope. Updating the web page on the town website. Okay, do I have that? I was, I think that was my bad. I think at the last dis meeting, we decided I was just gonna walk through with Tamika and try and make some updates, and I, I haven't looked at it yet. Oh, Tiger. My God, you're no. slacking, Melissa. What the hell, you think you're me? I know, I know. <laughs> but I'm fine taking this on with Tamika still, if you guys are okay with that. You know, I think it's just kind of updating some of the links and um, having a kind of policy document that we made the year or so ago uploaded and stuff. Yeah, I agree having that on there. I don't know what I, I mean, I looked around today and I don't know that I want any of any of these links up there because it's all electronic DEP. We should right. ship them right to that site. Yes. Maybe. Well, not everything is on eDEP. Um, like RDAs are not. So I would, my thing is, I think we'll just change it to the general mass.gov website with all of them. Yeah. Yeah, especially since these, as near as I can tell, are our downloaded copies from however long ago they were downloaded. Yeah, these are copies. These are not, this is not a direct link. Yeah, we got it. All right, so I'll be interested to see what you do with that, Melissa. Uh, I agree getting our policy up here is good. Uh, it's fine having the open space plan, getting the, getting the new one when it's done, okay. Oh, I didn't want to ask you, Melissa, since, since we're here. Yes. Is this, a, is this a correct list of the open space committee? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Okay. I, I think technically we have nine because we have one vacancy because someone resigned. Okay. We should probably put that up there. Have a line just for vacancy and and. Yeah. Um. Where did my mouse go? Switch to the right. I see it on my screen. <laughs> there it is. Aren't these people members? <laughs> yeah, they're members. Well, they're oh, not. They're at, at large, maybe that's why. They're not on No, they should all be called members, it's fine. And are you, are you sure that's Brian's last, uh, correct spelling of his no, last name? No, it's with a J. I that's, think I asked okay. Anita a while ago to fix it, but um, I'll remind. Oh, Tamika can fix that. Yeah. Oh, beautiful, yeah. I can fix that, but Tamika can fix that. I'll let you guys go in. York one. Yeah, with a J. I didn't see that. Uh, that's right, it was the woman. Who's an attorney? Yeah. Is she the one who re who resigned? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, her um, I think she made partner and just work there got bigger, so she didn't have the time. Too bad. Too bad. Um, Peter, I did have a question. Yes. Because we do list on the website um, the contractor affidavit, and I do provide that when I uh, give people their order conditions, but. I can count on zero fingers how many I've actually gotten back. So I don't know how enforceable the commission wants that to be or um Is this some type of little forms the who get the, the checklist and contract directed the form. Yeah, so that was something that I think we implemented. I don't even, I think that is might not even be on the the, the affidavit. So that the affidavit is just um, to allow the commission to know who the site super is and emergency contact in the event that we have a problem uh, that we would like to report or see. Um, so I apply it in South Road before construction starts. And technically, I think the way our special conditions are written now that we are enforcing, we could enforce it and issue an enforcement item if we don't have that. Um, so maybe it's something that we start reiterating at public meetings too. I agree that we should have these contacts. Yeah, because they never send them back. Yeah, let's... Protect homeowners, that's why I like it. Yeah. Isn't that a DEP requirement? No, it's not. 
Well, it's a requirement, I think, to notify us of the supervisor, but this specific document helps homeowners because it requires the contractor to sign and state that they have read the requirements and understand and take responsibility. Right. So it helps kind of the enforcement side, we still kind of technically would have to go after the property owner, but this gives the property owner some leg up in terms of kind of recouping some, some issues when if you know things worse do happen. As I recall on Bryce Estates, the DEP required the information of uh, a responsible person responsible for mm. emergency mitigation or what have you. Do you think that was because they had the superseding? Probably. Almost certainly. Well yeah. Well DEP put it in. Right. But I'm not sure if it's they just put it in or they just they just put it in. We, that's never been put. It could be I mean it's it's wise to have that. That should almost be one of those to add. Yeah, if we don't have a, if we don't have as part of our conditions that should become part of the standard. That, that, that we definitely, yeah, that. we definitely do. And that's why we made the form. Okay. Yeah, so like I said, I issue it whenever I issue the orders and then nobody sends them back. Um, and I Then we don't issue. Then you don't give it to them. If they don't have it back, they can't The problem it. is they can't start to work and by that I mean if we don't issue the orders They can't work. They can't they may not even hire the person who would be that person. Right. And so and it becomes a catch-22. And the affidavit is certifying they've read the order. Right. In all the conditions. So I think maybe, maybe Tamika, if the commission is open, maybe sending like a, kind of a general email to some of our heavy applicants, I'll say, and, you know, stating that as a reminder, these are some of our updated conditions, you know, in the past couple of years. Um, and to me, I can go over and pick out kind of a cue, a couple of key ones I think would be nice to remind people. Mm -hmm. Sure. But yes, Melissa, please remind us to remind the applicants and their whoever they send in to do this like we didn't do tonight. <laughs> I know, I apologize. I didn't think of it until I saw it on no, the page. No, that's and okay. Although I do have to say that um, Jim Harity is actually one of the only people that has returned it to me with his other lots. Good. So we're actually, that was probably pretty good. Yeah, but I'll bet that we never got one from no. CHA of the state or... Or okay. other folks, engineers that come in very often. Yeah, I think, yeah, we should definitely start Enforcing, enforcing that much more strongly. Oh, there's the affidavit. It's under uh, that's under submission requirements. That's where that that's so. Yeah, that's what I said. There, there are some things yeah, that can be strengthened. Why would they have the information well, prior to you? Yeah. And I think too, uh, the standard conditions say that the commission is supposed to be notified 48 hours prior to work to inspect the building barrier and. I know that you guys know that that very rarely happens. Very true. Um, so I, you know, I just wasn't sure. You know, I didn't want to chase people down. I can, but I didn't want to do that until I knew if that was something the commission really wanted to kind of hammer down on. We, we should at least have the option of saying we want to look at the at the barriers. Right. It does say it in the condition. Yeah. Yeah, but how do you get them? How did, how did it, what triggers them to notify us that their stuff is in place? Besides well, that's just it. It says 48 hours before yeah. they begin work. Right. Yeah. Oh. If people were following their order of conditions to a T, they would put up their DEP sign, they would install their road controls, submit their contractor affidavit, have their decision recorded, provide proof to Tamika, and ask Tamika um, for a pre-construction meeting to uh, approve erosion controls prior to work. Yeah, if, yeah, and, and what, and what color is the sky in that world? <laughs> I mean, yeah. but yeah, I we agree. We also have no way of verifying that people have recorded it with the registry. Nobody it might also be something that, that we can hit through um, viewpoint too, Peter, when you sign off on a building permit. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe just leave it a copy and paste of a couple of points that are standard in every one to say, you know, Please ensure your decision is recorded. Um, submit contractor as well as DP sign, etc. Yeah, that's a very good that's idea, good. Melissa. And I sometimes upload the order of conditions to the building permit record too. Yeah, I haven't done that, but we could. I can do that. 
I mean, you could do that. Great. Makes it easier for them. What makes it easier to track afterwards and even if somebody buys a house if they go back and look, now they're finding it in right. an easy spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now that it's all online, you can just search by address on viewpoint and everything will come up for that specific address. All right, I think we have some good mm -hmm. I think we have some good actions to start yeah. taking, yeah. <clears throat> so we will look forward. So do you Melissa, do you have a timeline for website work with Tamika? I will work on it next week. Within, okay. within next year. Yeah, next year, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it after <laughs> I wasn't saying that because I can't say that, but I was thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you're going to work on it in the next week or so, then I'll, we'll leave it on the agenda for next sure. time. Okay. Uh, should we also put, I, let's put bylaws and regs back on. Okay, I had another for April, you want it back on. Do you want to put it back Let's on now? start on now. If we're not going to actively work on the website as part of this meeting, okay. and it's just going to be a status update, I don't mind that, but we don't need to set aside a chunk of time for it. Let's right. instead allocate time to get Thanks. back to our bylaws. Thanks, Melissa. Okay. It's your fault. Yep. Uh, should I retract my statement? <laughs> <laughs> hate, hate you a long time. <laughs> Can't beat me up in public, so you tease me online. I get it. I get it. I don't. I won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I'll be back next time. I'll be ready. Is there any other business before the commission? Skip. We had started talking. This quick meeting we had. Mm -hmm. Did anybody approach anybody about wages? Oh, I've approached a lot of people about wages. And I have a lot of information and some thoughts. You and I can talk about it. <coughs> oh, all right. Because I did the same and I got, I felt like I got stopped on by a rhino. Yes, it will end up feeling like that. So I have a way around, I think. Oh, all right. Because we got that wet man money, that's what I was thinking. Yes, that's exactly correct. We do. That's right. exactly right. So I, want, I expect you to make so a motion. Yeah, you want a motion to adjourn? I think it's time. Second. Uh, roll call. Denza. Aye. Langren. Aye. Clark. Aye. Delacola. Aye. Crane Eye. We are adjourned at 718. Thank you very much, everyone.